Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, hopefully you've already subscribed to our channel. If you haven't, please do. Um, and when you do, be sure and tap on the little button, which is the notification bell, so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. Well, we're here and in our last video, what we did was we took a cylinder head apart. And I can find little things to correct in it, which I will do, but nothing really major. I mean, I have to be sure that these lines are completely clear and all that sort of thing. I'm doing that. It's okay. I've got the valve out of one. One of the valves is out, and I'm going to lap the valves, which I've shown how to do that in, in videos in the past. Another thing I noticed is that these rubber seals here on the rocker arms, um, they're, they're really old. I don't, know, I don't know what else to say about them. I don't feel real good about them. They don't seal real nice, I don't think. And that may be the problem with this top end oiling. You know, the top end, as far as oiling is, yeah, these rubber seals like this one, we look at it, it's kind of out of shape. Mm. Which is fine. I was hoping to find something wrong. You know, I haven't had this motor really opened like this. Something big? I haven't had the motor, the cylinder heads apart on it completely like I'm doing now. But what I'm trying to do is find out where we're losing the vacuum so that when the pistons go up, that's when the vacuum from the crankcase takes over and it's sucking the oil out of the rocker boxes. It's very confusing looking at the oiling system. I never had this problem and I've done quite a few knuckles in the past. And so I'm just chalking it up to my own ignorance and I'm going to go at it until I find it. I'm going to find where the, why the oil is staying up on top and not coming down. Which is supposed to drain down the pushrod tubes. Now, other than that, when I pull the head off, I notice that I've got a little scoring in the cylinder. And it's probably nothing to worry about. But as long as I'm there, as long as I'm there, what I'm going to do is pull the cylinder and put a fresh set of rings in this thing because we could be losing the vacuum from a bad ring. I mean, just these are things that I'm going to check. I don't mind there being something wrong. I don't mind fixing. I got to find out what it is. I want to understand it. And, you know, looking at the scores in the cylinder, they're not real bad, like I said which means I can probably just do a good job of ball honing it and put a fresh set of rings in it because where I live, it's quite toasty here. And to have anything set up tight is just not very bright. Okay, and I wanna look at the piston. I wanna clean that piston. I had to put some yucky gas in this thing last time I wrote it. And I think that's why I've got as much creepy carbon as I do. So what I'm going to do tonight because it is nighttime, which is what we wait for around here to do anything at this time of year. I think it was over 100 today, wasn't it, Mike? Oh, yes. I'm in here, yeah. You know, I was here all day. Yes. Uh, you know, me and Sonia just kind of stayed inside all day. Well, if you're going to stay inside all day, nothing like a good puppy dog to hang out with. So what I want to do, okay... To get the cylinder off, I have to take all four base nuts off, and then the cylinder will lift right off. On this side, this is where the ignition circuit breaker is, right here. So by removing the, the clip that holds it together and going like that, I can access that nut. Right, let me see if I can do it without getting your way. Can you, can you get a, a close-up on it, maybe? I can try. Okay, now I'm in there with the tool, mm -hmm. and... Oh, you got it. Of course. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, no, I can't get in there. Well, all right. that's all right. You're going to have to show me the tool. After I you. will. I will. Let's just see what we can do with this nut. I mean, I could just pull the whole distributor out of there. Not distributor. It's a circuit breaker. Well, Harley Davidson calls it a circuit breaker, and they're right, actually. Like they need me to tell them they're right. Oh, there we go. Can you see it? Yeah. Well, once I get that nut started, coming out of there. See? Uh -huh. 
Then what I'll do is I'll uh, get sliding on, yeah. A big, beautiful 21 inch wheel on my face. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. And once I get that out of there, the other ones will be quite a bit simpler. Anyway. I have never seen this knuckle like this. <laughs> you never seen it like this? Well, you know, about 15 years ago I restored it, so, you know. Now, one of the things, I always get questions from people on these. Mike, what should the torque be? What should the torque be? Well, you know, you can always look in a machinist's handbook and get a optimum torques for, for, for different uh, fasteners and things. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty neat. But on Harley, if you look at their old service manuals, there's no torque specs in the really old stuff. They never gave you torque specs on a knucklehead. Tighten them up good. You know, you're a bright farm boy. And that's, uh, that's kind of the way it works. So what I generally do is, of course, having worked on a lot of later model stuff, is I let the, uh, I let the later manuals guide me. I try to apply a little common sense, but I use those later manuals like, like if you look in a shovel head book, you'll find that torquing the uh, cylinders to 45 pounds is pretty much the way they want it. Or the way I want to do it because that's what it shows in a Harley manual. Does it, does it, uh, there we go, huh? Does it have any specs for the panhead? Um, I can't remember when they finally added them. I think it's somewhere near the end of the panhead run they started giving you Torque specs. Why you jumped all the way to shovel? Because I've done more shovel head work than anything else, and my own shovel head manual always laid on the bench with all of its destructions in it. I mean, I must have a hundred different service manuals. Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, and like I said, you got to use some common sense. If they found that is adequate, because because when we're talking about cylinders. We're talking about cast iron cylinders. Mm -hmm. And of course, shovel heads were the last ones to use cast iron cylinders. And Evos, there's a whole different process than just using a torque wrench. Yes, sir. So, you know, like I said, you have to apply a little bit of common sense. And, and when you know something is really adequately tight, then all the other fasteners that are doing the same job you want to get them the same torque. It's as important to make all that stuff match as anything else. I mean, that's what you really want. The, everything looks like torquing down a cylinder head. Well, I may put these heads down to 65 pounds, but my accurate torque wrench, torque wrench is going to make sure that they're all at exactly 65 pounds. Well, here we go. Oh yeah, I was going to show tools. I'm going to show tools just as soon as I get these two nuts off of here. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. All right. This is called a barrel wrench. This particular one uh, is a snap-on. It's a nice tool. And I don't always use it for pulling cylinders, but I knew that I had stuff crowding me on this. You know, you can't take the exhaust pipe off of this one without pulling the motor out. And that's not true of all knuckleheads, it's true of this knucklehead. And the guy that did these pipes, they never rattle, they don't leak, they don't do anything wrong. So obviously his theory on how to mount pipes <laughs> was good enough for me. Well, he, he was, you know, I've been in love with this bike since long before I owned it. I've been in love with it ever since I've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun to ride, and I get bummed when it's not up and running. I can tell. There we go. Now we go like that. I 
love following you in, in regard to this. <laughs> you just like the smell of it. I know you. The smell of it, and I love listening, listening to you laugh. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm out for a good time. <laughs> you know, I had... That's 5 ace, isn't it? Yep, yep. It is. It's 5 ace. This bite makes you laugh when you ride. Oh, yeah. Well, I had an Indian that you could hear every mechanical part in it. I mean, every, every mechanical You could hear every lifter. You could hear, you could hear the, the, the little rocker arms in it rattling, you know. And most people don't even realize that those old Indians, in spite of the fact they were flatheads, they, uh, they had rocker arms in them. They had some real interesting parts. But I pulled into my own yard one day in San Luis Obispo, and one of my buddies had came over, and he was waiting for me to get home. And he jumped up, and he said, that thing sounds like a calliope. <laughs> There's a good word for you. Okay, now, uh, the reason we're looking at those rings is not just these lightweight little scores, which I'll be able to, I think, hone out. But the other thing is, if there is a broken ring, that would explain losing vacuum. Mm. I mean, it's just the reality of things. Now, this... It's been in there for a long time, right? Well, yeah. I never pulled them out. Now, that cylinder is about loose. And what I'm going to do, okay, now this is of the utmost importance right now. Any time you're pulling, any time you're pulling a cylinder, you run the risk that if there's a broken ring, you're going to drop it in the crankcase. So all you want to do is pull that cylinder up far enough let me see if I can get it up a little ways. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, now what we're going to do is put a rag here. And then we'll put one on the other side. And what that'll do is stop us from, stop me from causing any damage. Because if I drop a piece of uh, piston ring in there, <laughs> it goes right down into the crankcase. And you can't have it floating around loose in there. He's taking it all apart. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, let's take this off slow and easy like. There we go. Now, once my hands are clean or clear of that, then I can, uh, yeah, we'll take a look in that cylinder in a couple minutes, Mike. Okay, the other thing is, if for any reason, the, uh, the uh, gaps in the rings, mm -hmm. if they line up with each other, mm -hmm. then you got a passage for oil to go through. They're supposed to be staggered, right? Yeah, and they are, but not... Not the way I would do it. It doesn't really matter what I would do, I guess. Not now, because now. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to get this. There, that's good enough, I guess. I'll get it out of here in a few minutes. It seems to me that these pistons, when I looked at them last time, mm -hmm. all I looked at was the tops. I don't think I pulled them. Mm -hmm. But I think, no, you weren't here. It wasn't here. It was way, way. Okay. Yeah, you've never seen inside this motor. No, uh-uh. Anyway, this one is, uh, I believe these are 40 over pistons. And if I decide that this cylinder needs to be, to be bored, I don't think it does. Let's see. Did I bring my light over here? Yeah, I did. I don't like these scores, but they're not bad scores. See? Well, we... There we go. Got some hash, 
hashing right there. Well, yeah, that's... So that's good. Well, you would think, but what I'm concerned about is things like that. Where is it? That's not it. There we go, right mm -hmm. there. See, see them? Yeah. They're not bad. They really aren't. I'll want to take tomorrow when I come down here, if it's not too hot, mm -hmm. I'll uh, come in here and I'll uh, measure the... Uh, the cylinders and the pistons, and I'm pretty much sure that a real nice cross, fresh cross hatch in there, honing that cylinder and putting a nice new set of rings on uh, these pistons, which are going to be scrubbed within, within a, an inch of their life, that's got to help with that vacuum in there. It absolutely has to. So that's really what I wanted to do. Uh, now that I've got this head and cylinder off, the front one that is, then I'll pull the back one tomorrow too, and we'll have a look at uh, at those. I'm just going to fresh up, freshen up everything, everything in the top end. The funny part of it is that here I am looking at this motor and looking for stuff wrong with it, and the contradiction is these two spark plugs. They're pretty much identical, mm -hmm. and they're clean, except for that garbage gas I put in it. I really think I really think that's why that piston's got that much crud on it. But anyway, so I guess that's what we'll be doing for now. Like I was saying, it's been so hot here that it's hard to do much. But uh, that's all right. I'll be into it tomorrow. And I don't think there's anything else I needed to mention. I think except uh, maybe the T-shirts. Uh oh, sleep. Sleeve? Oh, not a sleeve. Ta -da. Wait a minute. Well, that little pin fell apart. And the knuckle just tapped me in the head. You know what? What? That's going to look just like that. <laughs> look at that. It's lovely. Lovey dovey. Everything is lovey dovey. Right. Anyway, so I'm very excited to be going through this thing, and I am going to learn. What exactly caused that uh, oiling problem? I may even call an old buddy of mine down in San Diego tomorrow and have a little talk with him because he is a knucklehead expert. Nice. Well, yeah, I mean, it's very good. I don't mean to preach too much, but it really pays off to be smart enough to realize what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's about it for now. And like I said, I'll be doing a lot of this stuff uh, tomorrow. And all we're trying to do is make the oil to come out of the rocker boxes like it's supposed to, down into the crankcase through the pushrod tubes, and right on back so it drains and it doesn't pump all this oil out the top. So we'll be working more on it on the next video. So until then, I'll see you out on the road. <laughs>